Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly contest 3 and 25. Uh, it's a high level problem. The problem name is number of great partitions. The problem statement says that you are given an array nums consisting of positive integers and an integer k. Okay, partition the array in two ordered groups such that each element is, a, in, is in exactly one group. A partition is called great if the sum of elements of each group is greater than or equal to k. Okay. Return the number of distinct grade partitions. Now, since the answer may be too large, return it modulo 10 raised to power 9 plus 7. Two partitions are considered distinct if some element nums of i is in different groups in the two partitions. Okay. Uh, relatively, I would say complex problem statement. Let's see what it wants to say. Okay. So, this is an array that you have. Okay. Ar array of positive numbers and an integer k. We need to divide this. Okay into two groups okay we need to partition it into two groups such that the sum of each group is greater than or equal to this given k right so and we need to find the number of such partitions like for example for one two three four what could be one of the partitions one of the ways to partition the array it could be this so the sum of this is six the sum of this is four both are greater than or equal to four yes one three two four again the sum of this is 4, this is 6, so this is also valid. This is also valid, this is also valid, this is also valid. What about this? 1, 2, 3 and 4. This sum is 3. This is not valid, right? This is not valid. So this is what the problem is asking us to do. You need, we need to find the number of partitions, okay? Yeah, we need to find the number of partitions. So for this, the answer will be 6. For this, you can see we have 3, 3 and 3. So there is no way you can partition it because if you pick these two in, in one group, the sum becomes 6, but this remains to be 3. Similarly, if you pick these two again, this remains 3, this becomes 6. So it is not greater than or equal to 4. So again, no answer in this case. What about this? So here we can have two possible partitions. What are those partitions? This is partition 1, this is partition 2. Put 6, this 6 in first, the second 6 in second. Right? This is one valid partition. Swap it. Put the second 6 in the first partition and the first 6 in the second partition. This is also valid. So answer is 2. Why? Because it says that two partitions are considered distinct. If for some element nums of i, it is in different groups in the two partitions. So just see here. This was at index 0. Now it is in partition 1. Similarly, now it is in partition 2. So that's why. So and what are the constraints? The constraints are the number of elements that I can have is 1000. Okay? And each number can go up to 10 raised to the power 9, right? So <laughs> if you if you try to do a brute force approach here, right? What could be a brute force approach? Uh, checking for all the possible arrangements, right? But that would obviously give you TLE and that will be sort of an exponential solution, right? What could be the other approach that we can do, right? Because in, in, in that case, since your K is 1000, so how many subsets can you have, right? the number of subsets can go up to 2 raised to power 1000. So this is this is not at all, at all something that you can go with, right? What could be the other thing that we can do, right? So we need to find the number of subsets with some greater than or equal to k, right? Now, we are familiar with knapsack problem, a typical dynamic programming problem, right? Where what we do, we find the number of subsets, which are basically represented by an array dp why why i'm not going into the details of knapsack because again that is a different topic but if you are familiar with knapsack or basic dynamic programming things then what we do we calculate that for every for n elements how many subsets have a sum of i simple stuff we know how to calculate it i'll show you the code as well the, the code is pretty small this is the code but yeah if we calculate it if we calculate it then what is the benefit that we get we know what is the total number of partitions that we can have. Let's call it capital X minus. If we know what is the number of invalid partitions, let's call it capital I. This will be my answer, right? What is the total number of <coughs> partitions that I can have, right? It can be 2 raised to n. Why? Because I have n elements and every element has two possibilities. Either it can go in partition 1 or it can go in partition 2. So I have two raised to n possibilities. These are the total number of subsets minus what are the invalid partitions. So the invalid partition subset, whatever you call it is suppose X is an invalid partition is in an invalid sub subset. 
so what is the contribution of this in the fi- of of this thing in the final answer the contribution of everything is twice why because suppose a subset is invalid so that subset can either go in partition 1 or in partition 2 what do i mean to what what do i mean by this so suppose 1 comma 2 in this case the sum of this was 3 this was an invalid subset so this can either go in partition 1 just a second yeah this can either go in partition 1 or in partition 2 so whatever is the count of subset i what is the what whatever whatever is the count of this subset twice will be its contribution in the final answer right because either it can go in uh, one partition or the other partition this takes care of everything hence what we'll do we know that we want our sum to be greater than let me just erase it to 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 make it more clear okay we want uh, we want that the sum of the partitions is greater than or equal to k okay so using typical knapsack thing what we can do we can find for every n and for every sum what are the number of subsets so now total number of uh, what do you call it total number of possibilities is 2 raised to n okay minus 2 into i'll explain you again why this 2 number of invalid sets right what are the invalid sets all the dp of n comma i where i is less than k this what is this this is the sum i okay and i want all the so which are invalid sets invalid sets are those whose sum is less than k valid are greater than or equal to k so invalid are less than k so this will be your final answer now comes the question how do you calculate it that is something we'll come to that okay this is a simple thing right this is a simple thing calculating the power this is also a typical knapsack problem why this too i'll explain it again because this tells you dp of n comma i tells you that for n elements for the given n elements how many subsets have a sum of i okay let's call it x okay so it tells me that there are x number of subsets which when given all the n numbers give me a sum of i but these x subsets have two possibilities either they can go in each one of them obviously can go in either this one this partition or this partition so that means from the final answer i will be deducting 2 into x because these are my total invalid combinations right so if i show you the code then this is my main function uh, obviously these are some bookkeeping things that i have done um, so yeah you you take some mod there is a sum now one more thing you calculate the sum of all the elements right if the sum of all the elements is less than 2 into k then obviously you return 0 why because you want to divide your array into two partitions and the sum of those both the partition needs to be greater than or equal to k right greater than or equal to k now if your total sum of the elements is less than or equal to twice of k then obviously you cannot partition it right so that is why i have added this condition okay uh now comes the main knapsack thing uh, typical dynamic programming problem these are the number of elements this is an array i have taken i have used an iterative approach you can use use a recursive approach as well uh these are n plus 1 uh, into k combinations and i'll be filling it up how i'll be filling it up um uh, for for n elements and for k sum right so i goes from 0 to n uh, j goes from 0 to k this is number of elements you calculate it how you calculate it simple stuff uh, again i'm not going into too much of depth so uh, for n plus 1 when i consider when i consider an element suppose i consider the uh, ith element so either i can pick it up or i can skip it right if i if i skip it then what happens if i skip it then the number of subsets when i consider the ith element as well and some j will be equals to dp of i minus 1 j simple whatever uh, the number of subsets were there when i took n minus i minus 1 elements right uh, <laughs> here the indices are basically 0 to n and uh, i plus 1 so in 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 other words it will be since the indices are plus 1 so it will be dp of i so for i th index i am k 
keeping a track of dp of i plus 1 so for the ith element if you skip it so dp of i plus 1 will be equals to dp of ij simple this is this this is that line however the other option is i i take it now when i take it what will happen this is my sum and if the sum is greater than this is the sum that i'm considering if sum is greater than the current element so what do you do dp of i and j plus equals to because this is another combination that i have dp of i j minus nums of i that means till previous element what were the number of subsets which had a sum this simple stuff typical dp and then you take the mod okay so after this you'll have all the possible combinations of n and k right now you just need to apply this formula that we have seen here okay so here calculate 2 raised to n okay that's what i have done calculate 2 raised to n and in this step deduct all the invalid subsets so for i equals to 0 i less than k this for all i less than k you are deducting two times dp of i uh, dp of ni okay and then at every step obviously you are taking more than adding this as well because maybe when you take when you when you subtract it your answer becomes negative so obviously uh, that's the rule right you add mod and then again take the mod right and finally you return our answer so yeah that that was it uh, about the problem i would say a combination of a couple of concepts uh but yeah good concepts combined to to make a great problem uh that's the basic summary of this one okay so yeah i hope you learned something new from this video um in case of any queries please do mention that into the comments i'll revert on each one of them also if you find this channel useful please do subscribe to it if this video was useful uh, also uh, hit the like button and um, i'll see you in the next videos take care bye bye